Okay, so I want to investigate the volume of a right circular cylinder equation in the context of a related rates problem. And there's three scenarios that I want to look at. The first scenario is going to be when R is a constant. You might be saying, well, what do you mean R is a constant? So I guess let's put a little context into this. If I was to pour liquid into this cylinder here, liquid would fill the cylinder up and basically would create another cylinder, this purple cylinder right here. And if you think about it, what would be changing as the liquid, albeit it's purple, what would be changing as the liquid goes into the cylinder? Well, the height would change, right? It would actually increase as I dump liquid into it, and the volume of this stuff would change. There'd be more liquid in there. What wouldn't change is the radius. The radius of the liquid, no matter at what level it's at, will always remain constant. And that's kind of the situation that we're talking about here. So now what I want to investigate is well how does it play out when I take the derivative of both sides with respect to time because that's basically what you do in related rates equations. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's take it, uh, the derivative of the left side with respect to time and let's take the derivative of the right side with respect to time and see what happens. So now remember, when we're doing this, we're treating volume and height as functions of time. R is actually going to be constant. So the derivative of V with respect to T, where V is a function of time, would be 1 dV dt. And that comes from the chain rule. On the right side, I have pi is a constant, but we're also saying R is a constant. So pi R squared is basically a constant. So when I go to take the derivative of this side, the derivative of a constant times a function is just the constant times the derivative of the function. And the derivative of h with respect to time, where h is a function of time, would be 1 dh dt. And this right here would represent my related rates equation that comes about from this scenario where r is constant. Okay, so let's look at some other scenarios. Let's take a look at the scenario where instead of r being constant, h is constant. So again, I want to see how it plays out when I take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So again, just to emphasize, in this situation now, whatever the, however you want to think about the problem, h is going to remain constant throughout the problem, but v and r are going to be our functions of time. So they will actually change as time goes on. So how does that affect the derivative? Well, the derivative of the left side would be, again, 1 dv dt. No big deal there. Using the chain rule, remember v is a function of t. And now on this side, our constant is pi and h. So multiplication is commutative. So if I want, I can think of this as pi h r squared. So just like before, when I take the derivative of a constant times a function, I basically pull the constant out, and then I just multiply by the derivative of the function. The function here is r squared. So the derivative of r squared with respect to t, where r is a function of t, is going to be 2r to the 1 dr dt, again using the chain rule. If I want, I can clean this up, dv dt equals 2 pi h r dr dt, and when I say clean this up, I just rearrange the order of multiplication. So this is the related rates equation that I would get from this scenario, where h is a constant, but v and r were functions of time. You can see it looks a little different than the first one. The last scenario, maybe the most interesting, is going to be when, well, what if neither is constant? So neither h nor r are constant. How is this going to affect stuff? So again, I want to see how it plays out when I take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, now treating everything as functions of time, volume, h, and radius. So let's take a look. Oh. All right, so on this side, we've seen this play out already. Derivative of v with respect to t, where v is a function of t, is 1 dv dt. So at this point, that's not very interesting anymore. But this side is interesting because now r and h are functions. Neither one of them is constant. So when you're taking the derivative of a product of two functions, you have to use the product rule for differentiation. So that's what we're going to have to do here. Now, personal preference for me, when I do the product rule, I like to take everybody in front to be my first. So in other words, I'm going to include this constant to be part of my first function. And then h over here, that's going to be my second function. 
So now when I take the derivative using the product rule, I have the first function, pi r squared, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of h with respect to t, where h is a function of t, would be 1 dh dt. Then plus the second, which is h, times the derivative of the first function. Well, the derivative of this function, you'd have the constant times 2r to the 1 dr dt, or if we want to clean that up, 2 pi r to the 1 dr dt. All right, again, if I want to clean this up just a little bit, I would have pi r squared dh dt over here, plus, and I guess clean it up, I'll just chuck the 2 out in front. So 2 pi h r to the 1 dr dt. So depending on whether r or h is constant will depend on what your related rates equation is going to look like. So take a look at the first scenario. Notice in your related rates equation you have a dv dt and a dh dt. Typically they'll give you one of those quantities in the problem and you'll have to solve for the other. Likewise, basically the same situation in 2 where you have a dv dt and a dr dt. You'll notice in 3 there's dv dt, dh dt, and dr dt. There's actually three derivatives or three rates. So that means they would have to give you two out of the three. And if they didn't do that, they would have to give you some type of information to maybe get one in terms of the other.